I want to talk today about extractions and how they're used in organic chemistry. Extractions separate compounds based on differences in solubility. We're typically using two solvents in an extraction, and the way that an extraction separates two substances is that the substances being separated have substantially different solubilities in the solvent pair that's being used. So one will be soluble in one solvent, one will be soluble in the other solvent. Usually when we do this, one of the solvents is organic and the other is water-based or aqueous solvent. And very importantly, the two solvents cannot be soluble in one another. So when you mix them together, they need to form two layers. Conceptually, what we're doing is the following, or I should say visually, of what we're doing is the following. We're starting with a solution of the two compounds that we want to separate. In this case, one of them is represented as C1, and the other is represented as C2. We add the second solvent that's going to be part of our extraction, and we place the entire mixture into a separatory funnel. And you can see what's happened here is whatever compound C1 is, it's much more soluble in the lower phase. Usually the lower, more dense phase is our or aqueous phase, but it doesn't always have to be. Particularly in the case of chlorinated solvents, the lower phase would be the organic phase, but most of the time the lower phase is the aqueous phase. And in this case, the compound C2 is more soluble in the upper phase, which is typically our organic phase. So C1 in the aqueous, C2 in the organic. We then separate our two layers and end up with C1 in one flask and C2 in another flask, and effectively we've separated our two compounds. Now, this is definitely a simplification of what happens because almost never in the course of one extraction cycle do you end up with 100% of one compound in one layer and 100% of the other compound in another layer. Typically, what you end up with is enrichment of the two compounds in each layer. For instance, if we focus just on our organic layer, and let's assume that in this case, after our first round of extraction, we end up with 90% of C2 in the top layer and 10% of C1 in the top layer. Or in other words, the top layer is a mixture of 90% C2 and 10% C1. Presumably, the aqueous layer would be the reverse of this. and would be mostly C1 and only a small amount of C2. So what we do in this case is we do a second round of extraction. Another way to focus on this is to focus on the partitioning of the minor component, C1 in this case, between the organic layer and the aqueous layer. What we can say is that 10% of C1 is in the organic, 90% is in the aqueous. So that when I do a second extraction, 90% of that 10% will be removed and only 10% of that 10% or 1% will be left. Now I'm simplifying this a little bit because we will lose some of the C2 that is in the organic layer to the aqueous layer, but after the second extraction, it'll approximately be 99% C2, 1% C1. If we did a third extraction, again, we would leave behind 10% of that 1% of C1 that's left. And you can see how very quickly most of what is left in the upper organic layer would be C2. And typically when we do extractions like this, we do do multiple rounds of extractions. And this was our first extraction, second extraction, and third extraction. And the reason that we do multiple rounds of extractions is it's more efficient and does a better job at purifying our compound than simply doing, for instance, one extraction with a larger volume of solvent. Um, we very rapidly, as I said before, get relatively pure of whatever compound we're trying to extract. Now, one complication with extractions like this is often 
for a simple extraction as depicted here, it's hard to find a solvent pair that will have as good a separation as indicated here. 10% of one compound, 90% of the other compound. A lot of times we have to use other tools to help adjust the solubility of one compound versus another. One particular example of this is something called an acid-base extraction. And acid-base extractions are very useful when we're trying to separate compounds that have bit different acid-base characteristics. For instance, an acid from a neutral compound, or an acid from a basic compound, or a neutral from a basic compound. And I want to go through at least one example of how this works. But in general, start with a mixture of not very polar compounds in an organic solvent. And at this point, we change the polarity of one of the compounds by using its acid or base properties. A basic organic compound can be converted into a cation by reacting it with an acid. Alternatively, an, an acidic organic compound can be converted into an anion by reacting it with a base. The differences in polarity that result from this can be used to separate the compounds in our mixture by extraction. Because the basic um, cation or the acidic anion, these are both polar compounds now. And I want to look at an example of this. In this example, we're going to start with a mixture of some neutral organic compound R and some organic base R NH2. We pour our mixture into a separatory funnel, and then we're going to add some sort of aqueous acid to this compound. When we do this, we get two layers, our aqueous layer down the bottom, our organic layer at the top. Also, notice that our amine has been protonated by the acid, so it's now much more polar. It's a cation, and it's soluble in the aqueous phase rather than the organic phase. We're going to separate our two layers now so that we have one fraction with just our neutral compound and one with our protonated basic compound. And what we're going to do to the protonated compound is we're going to add base to remove the acid that we added to it. When we do that, we get back our original unprotonated amine separated from our neutral compound. So now we have one fraction with our neutral compound, one fraction with our protonated, with our unprotonated, our neutral basic compound that no longer has a positive charge. And in reality, these probably won't both be in separatory funnels at this point, but your instructor will talk to you more about that. At this point, what we do is we transfer both of our fractions, depending on where they are, to dry Erlenmeyer flasks. And both of them are going to be contaminated with small amounts of H2O because some of our aqueous layer, no matter what, is probably soluble in the organic layer. And there would actually be one extra step that I'm not showing here with our um, basic compound because at this point you can see I still have it listed as being in the aqueous layer. Well, we know that now that it's not protonated, it's not soluble in the aqueous layer. So we would either filter it at this point to isolate a solid or more commonly what we would do is we would extract it with our organic solvent back into the original organic solvent it was in and then dry it. Either way, there will be drying steps involved. This is just sort of a general schematic process of what happens in an acid-base extraction. Now, we showed this for a base. If we were doing this for an acid, it would be slightly different. Instead of adding an acid to our mixture, we would add a base. And at this point, instead of adding a base, we would add an acid. But the principle is still the same.